Bienvenido a Costa Rica, Mai. Welcome to Costa Rica. We're here for the Van Stab High Central America presented by Monster Energy, a surf competition mostly in the air. This year, we've brought 18 male surfers and six ladybirds down to Playa Hermosa, Costa Rica for 12 days. We'll discuss the official format later, but the general rule is to go as high as humanly possible and ride away clean. All happening in Costa Rica, baby. excited to put on a big rotation. I've been going for a couple and getting so close. But yeah, besides that, man, I'm loving the environment, loving the energy. Wait, did... Aaron Brooks just landed the best female air in history in the first hour of Stab High. Oh my gosh, I thought I was gonna fall three different times on that wave. I'm mindful, I didn't think that I was gonna make that. I was just trying to hug it back to the flats as far as I possibly could to make it because if you get stuck in the white water, it kind of bounces you off, but I'm really stoked. I was telling him earlier, I was like, I did a little air in front of her, and I felt like I did an air in front of like Kelly Slater because I was just like, oh, she saw it, she's my favorite. <laughs> it was crazy, check this out. Like full on, like gnarly whitewash recovery. Boom! Oh, that was sick. Yes, that was so sick. Are you stoked? Did it feel good? How'd you hang on? You I just hung on. All right. You gotta teach me. <laughs> I've got chills. That was incredibly inspiring. There's not even air wind. It was a very foamy wave, and it was a very throaty section. That was <laughs> sick. <laughs> that was really sick. I feel like I just witnessed like the ultimate like glimpse into the future. What is a stab high? This is our fourth edition of Stab High, and the second in the ocean. We started out in Waco, Texas's BSR Surf Ranch in 2018, competing in the American Wave Machine's Perfect Swell Wave Pool. Australian Noah Dean won that inaugural event, with then-unknown punter Aton Osborne taking home the Monster Air Award and $20,000 for the highest air of the event. I think there should be way more of these. <laughs> it's like the most perfect ramp I've ever surfed, so to have a comp in it just seems right. 
In 2019, we returned to Waco and introduced a new division, the Vans Ladybirds. Featuring girls 15 and under, we saw huge performances from Katie Simmers, Bella Kenworthy, Sky Brown, and eventual winner, Sierra Kerr. Chippa Wilson won the men's division, and Cam Richards earned the Monster Air Award. In the midst of 2020's pandemic, we managed to secure two charter boats in the Mentawai Islands for Stab High non -Clarine. The waves were incredible, occasionally too good for airs, but Ian Crane managed to find a windy wedge and stomp one of the most technical and progressive airs in history, taking out the win in the process. Our head judge and ringleader Nathan Fletcher won the Monster Air Award for his infamous out of the tube straight air. And Katie Simmers won the Ladybirds with style and grace. Now we're in Costa Rica, eating way too much gallo pinto and attempting the biggest, most technical airs ever done on a surfboard. This is Van Stab High Central America, presented by Monster Energy. When most people think of surfing Costa Rica, they picture this. When Endless Summer 2 was released back in 1994, these waves were considered perfect by amateurs and pros alike. But today's top surfers are after something a little different. Rather than peeling feathery offshore perfection, today's pros prefer steep, powerful waves that offer hefty sections for turns, tubes, and the occasional monster air. In other words, closeouts. We've done stab high in the Waco wave pool and in Indonesia's Mentawai Islands, but this time we're heading to a wave renowned for some of the heaviest sections in the Northern Hemisphere, Playa Hermosa, Costa Rica. 115 miles as the pelican flies from my iconic Witch's Rock in Ollie's Point. Playa Hermosa couldn't be further from the dreamy sessions Pat and Wingnut shared in Endless Summer 2. Coming out of deep, mud-stained water, South Pacific swells explode across Hermosa's four-mile-long beach all year round, with waves growing increasingly larger as you move from the north to the south end of the beach. In fact, about the only similarity between Hermosa and Endless Summer 2 are the saltwater crocodiles which often slither their way out of the local river mouths and into the lineup in search of their next meal. We see this as an extra incentive for our competitors to spend the majority of their sessions above the lip. This year especially, seems how COVID's hit. Stab High has definitely gone multicultural. There's people from Japan, there's people from Brazil, there's people from Costa Rica, there's people from all sides of America, people from Europe, Spain, Australia, South Africa. And the reason it is like that is because what they did was picked the best people for this event from all over the world. And so that's giving people that might not have a chance, you know, they got 10 days to really perform on a, on a world scale. And so it's pretty cool because these people would never have that opportunity, in my opinion, because it's not, not like they're tour surfers. This is letting them perform on the world stage to really make a name for themselves. You know what you're doing? No. <laughs> It's a 12 day event. All the judges are gonna judge who has the best right and left. Each one of the surfers will have their own filmers. They can go anywhere in Costa Rica, wherever suits them to get their best right and left possible. Four people, whoever have the best, four top right and lefts are gonna make it into a one day, 24 hour final. And then as far as the ladybirds go, their contest is gonna end on the 12th day, whoever has the best right and left, and we're gonna judge it here. I'm shaking so many hands, I'm like going surfing. I, I literally feel like a spectator. Like, I'm psyched to hang out and like surf and stuff, but honestly, like the contest is the last thing in my mind right now. You know, wherever you feel uncomfortable is where you should be, because that's where you're gonna learn and like realize, you know, like, if I don't think of myself as an air guy and then come on this trip and do an air and get a 24 on the first day, like, I'm pretty stoked. <laughs> um, but yeah, it feels good. And then you kind of see, like, ah, oh, I should probably just keep pushing myself. Might really start surprising myself. And yeah, that's, that's where satisfaction comes from, is thinking you can't do something and then doing it. While Stab High is certainly a vessel for self-realization, it's also a proper surfing competition. Here's how the judging will work. There are five judges. South Africa's Mikey February is our aesthetic barometer. He'll be keeping an eye on surfer style and technical approach. 
The Basque Country's Ainara Aymat can kick your ass and head high lefts or a game of chess. Ainara will reward creativity in the air. Brendan Buckley is Stab's new editor-in-chief, but he was once paid actual money to perform flyaway airs. He'll be dissecting surfers' landings. Standing at a towering 5 feet 5 inches is Stab's senior editor, Mikey Siramella. If you can't do an air over Mikey, you probably shouldn't be in this event. He'll be focusing on aerial height. Our head judge is Nathan Fletcher, brother to aerial pioneer Christian Fletcher and the man who nearly landed surfing's loftiest punt last year at Pipeline. He'll be focused on aerial progression in its many forms. For every completed air in Stab High Central America, each judge will give a score out of 10 points based on the following criteria. Creativity, progression, height, style, landing. Those five judges' scores will then be added together to achieve a number out of 50 points. This will be the official wave score. For reference, here's what a 25 looks like. If you guys know right off the bat that you guys want to go check a wave, let Mikey know and he'll start organizing you guys into groups. Part of this is also is that we're all on a surf trip, so if you guys know a spot that you don't want to tell people about that you guys want to go, and you want to smoke bomb people and find a filmer and a camera guy, Mikey will help facilitate you guys going wherever you want. So if you guys have an idea with which waves you want to go right now, talk to Mikey and he'll get you in a van and get you going. So. If there's one name that's synonymous with Costa Rican surfing, it's Carlos Munoz and his big, beautiful afro. Carlos was our first invite to this year's Stab High, but a lingering injury left him on the sidelines. He was still happy to impart us with his local knowledge. Yeah, it's been a privilege uh, being in Costa Rica uh, many different ways. A lot of pro surfers come here very often. Well, in relationship between here and where I grew up, I grew up in Esterillos. That's like 20 minutes south after that point that is over there. Yeah, it's a, a perfect playground for me and the whole country of Costa Rica. I would say ask him and then try to get a band together and go south. It's a bit of a Would anywhere be catching a little more swell? Like Hermosa always has more swell than everywhere else, but the beach is so open, so yeah. every little bit of wind affects it. Or we could check the other spots in Hermosa on the same. Just look for Just to have a look. Yeah. yeah, I'm down to go do that. Check the sand out. Yeah, it's the super, spots. super. Such a long beach. There's so many little sandbars we can check. I guess. At least have an idea. I think everyone's good enough, honestly. It's just like, if you get the right section, most like normal circumstances, like this kind of crew wouldn't be together like normally. So it's sick, like we've got a big variation of, of cool guys. Seven. Yeah, I'm happy to throw a seven at that. That yeah, was that substantial. Flyer Mosa is is very good for two airs, you know, when when we do, when we only free surfing, we, we make a lot of airs, corrupts, oli oops, uh, straight airs. You can do as uh, many you want. And the, like I told you, the beach is long, so you can surf this side doing combos and finish it with air, or start with air and finish with combo, two airs in the same wave. But you find out when he's pumping, he's, he's heavy.
it's really rad watching everyone just sending it and like it's pretty cool. Everyone's human and like you're really looking at guys like Albie and Matt, it's like okay they fall. But there's a there's a, a ranch down there. the wave like lurches at the perfect time right there and it gives him that extra. I really like that. He's so high. An eight or a nine, that's a monster error for the sure. The other thing to think, I mean this isn't like something that should go into your like scoring necessarily, but this was at like dead high tide when everybody else had already come in because they thought that there was no ramps. Like most people were surfing the shore break at this time because they thought out the back like wasn't steep enough and he did the biggest air so far, like the highest air. Double arm swing he was up there so long. Yeah, but I feel like in a weird way, it's almost like pretty nuts if you just stomp it so confident that then your board breaks. And he did. He did, that he was did like that. literally when you watch him, you could see him just like you drop could, it. Yeah. And you could almost see the board break in the landing and he just stuck it so like, that's that pretty. So lofty. That's pretty lofty. I don't think anyone can beat that straight there. Yeah. That thing was Not right easy. now. No way. Right now. You'd have to think though that like, like that would set the bar for a straight air, so that's gotta yeah. be probably like I, I think know. going maybe there's... more. They'll probably go seven, seven five. Because they got elite. It's only they always, right? yeah, they always do that. Because you can go do flips. And yeah. I'm gonna go nine. You go nine. Uh, I'm gonna go nine too. Go on nine. Mateus, he was super high. I can't imagine what more you could do besides like. I don't know. I think I'll give that. Yeah, I give that a nine. The only way it could be bigger if it was a bigger section. Maybe an audio landing. Actually, I'm changing mine to an eight. I'm gonna score pretty high because at the end of the day, we're gonna have four people up there, and if like they all have nines, that's sick. Nines or tens, that's like awesome. You know, it's not like giving somebody a higher score is gonna like, yeah, you know, make or break anything. I'm not afraid to score high here. I'm going with a nine. Okay, so three nines, two eights, 43. It's a pretty good score for that, yeah. Yeah, well, there's a lot of uh, famous waves that get filmed around here. El Hoyo, which is like about an hour away from here, north. It's a right wedge. I don't really ever go there because the, the boogie boarders are pretty nice. It's kind of like our, 
our wedge, like uh, from California. That's kind of like what we can compare it to, and they're full of boogie boarders all the time. They're kind of aggro. When people do come from other places, they do want to go surf it because it is like a, not a novelty because it breaks pretty often, but it's just that crazy different wave that you can get like a, either a good barrel at the beginning or a good air section at the end or even like a few turns in. Getting rained on, nice nice adventure. Walking to a, a wave we haven't surfed yet. We've seen before, but seen some video parts that sound fun and wanted to get out of the house. See where it goes. Uh, we heard it's not good right now, but our expectations are still up there, I think. I don't know what we're gonna find. That, that, is, that is the fun part. <laughs> Like it hurts right now, but I can only just do that. That's what f***ing hurts. Oh. Competition makes you want to see the guy fall and you catch a good wave, right? Because that's how it goes, because you want to win. But this, the stab high, you want to see your buddy do good. Boom, and that's going to make you want to go bigger. So it's not that you necessarily want to see him fall because you want to see him do good, but that's going to give you the drive to do your best. Brazil's Wesley Dantas was so excited about his stab high invite, he came to Costa Rica a few days early to loosen up. Unfortunately, he got a little too loose on this one and blew out his knee. So we were left with an extra spot to fill. After a heated and Instagram-inspired debate, the judges agreed on two surfers, Baja Koala and Raf Sarab. Nate invited both of them down to Costa Rica to compete in a surf off for the final spot. Yo, is this Kevin for Bob? Yeah, yeah. Hey, Kevin, this is Nathan Fletcher calling you. They're like talking to you. That's it. Pretty much, they want you to get down here immediately. We'll see you in a few days. All right, sounds good. Thanks, okay. Nathan. Yo, Rasta Rob, this is Nathan Fletcher calling you, buddy. We've picked you to come down and join these people for Stab High. Hurry up and get down here because we want to meet you in person, face to face. For Kevin Baja Kuala Mesa, this means an overnight flight from Cabo San Lucas, Mexico to San Jose, Costa Rica. Meanwhile, Robbie Rasta Rob McCormick is driving straight through the night from Dallas, Texas to get his passport in Florida before hopping on a flight the next afternoon. They'll arrive in 24 hours. From the beach, you're mind surfing, you're going like, oh, there's a section, there's a section everywhere. And uh, it's not the case when you get out there. Uh, you kind of get out there and uh, you're, either, you're either gonna click in rhythm or you're gonna be kind of chasing it the whole time. But 
I can tell he's just psyched. He's, he's so good. He's just so puppy and like. He's gonna surf a lot and he's really talented. Well, let's put it this way he's not sitting on the beach drinking beer right now. <laughs> <laughs> So this is my first time judging the ladybirds. It's gonna be fun. Super excited. <laughs> yeah. Erin diría que es la que mejores aéreos le he visto de de frontside y me encanta su estilo también. I haven't seen this yet. Oh my gosh. <laughs> That was outrageous. <laughs> Have you ever seen a go? How do you like score that? that? <laughs> no. Mm. That was insane. What did you like about it? Everything, like the rotation, it's so fast. Everything it was almost closing out already. Yeah, it's super sick. That was like a 10 on the QS, on the CT, on yeah. that. Yeah. It was like. Just all around, yeah, that was a 10. I don't even, like, how did she stay That's on her a 10. board? I'm gonna give that a 10. 10. Yeah. I couldn't see her where she was in the water. How old is she, 12, 11? 13, I think. 13? Yeah. That's gnarly. Yeah, and that landing, like, was pretty... For how critical it was, she, it was almost perfect, you know? Like, she was wrestling with it, but she wasn't really bobbling because it wasn't like she wasn't making it. It was because the wave was trying to overtake her and it was that powerful for how small she was. And it was downwind. Like she was like, yeah. everybody, the only airs done on this day were on rights and she landed this air going downwind, which is like impossible. Yeah, I'm going 10 as yeah, well. I'm, I'm going, going 10 too. Yeah. It was like overhead. And it was all the way she's around. Look, she's, yeah, that's a 10. That was a mate. Yeah, yeah it's it a it It's pretty iconic. Yep, first 10 ever. Well, it's a well-deserved one, so yeah. Well done, Aaron. So cool having everyone here, like a bunch of amazing air guys watching me and cheering for me, <laughs> makes me super happy. There's been a first ever in Stop High, and that first ever right now is Aaron Brooks getting the first 10 in the Lady Birds division. Uh, Aaron Brooks has been super cool to watch. It's crazy every time you watch her, I feel like she gets better every day, and so it's like something new happens. And so we're like Aaron Brooks fans. I don't know, it's weird to say, but yeah, my kids and me. So. That's whatever that is. <laughs> After the first days of competition, Aaron Brooks has a stranglehold of the Ladybirds division with a perfect 50 on her left and a 29 for her backside straight air. The men's leaderboard is also starting to take shape with Matt Miola, Eric Eiselman, Malachi Martinez, and Mateus Hurdy stamping themselves as early favorites. Mateus' massive slob didn't just propel him to the top of the leaderboard. It also made the Brazilian our first serious contender for the Monster Air Award. This honor is bestowed upon the surfer who does the biggest air in Van Stab High. The award is equally as coveted as winning the event outright, not just because of the 15k prize, but because it's awarded to the loftiest air of the entire competition. Stay tuned for the next episode when the new swell arrives and the injuries start picking off our competitors one by one. hard they're gonna go as big and gnarly as they can and usually when you're trying your hardest and you make a mistake you get hurt throw up your big toe oh boy <laughs> <laughs>